Hi, I'm Jack Peterson. If you've been viewing the tutorials in this series, you've been introduced to the spirit and the personal habits that underlie Ignatian discernment. I'd like to turn now to how these principles are applied in practice. Now, the difficulty of defining the steps of group discernment is that they're as varied as the groups themselves and the decisions they need to make. Still, every group discernment will consist of six components. Triage of the discernment needed, gathering background information, individual prayer and reflection, group discussion, making the decision, and implementation. The first component is a process triage. Just as a doctor needs to assess the amount and type of treatment needed by a trauma patient, groups need to know the time and effort they'll need to commit to the discernment process. A simple issue, like revision of the board's meeting attendance policy, will require less time in each of the components than, say, formulation and revision of a strategic plan. In the triage component, someone on behalf of the group or the group itself decides just how much time and process will be dedicated to each of the other components. The second component of group discernment is gathering information. Good decisions require good information, but there's a limit to how much information is useful. Based on this information, the group will have a good idea of how much and what kind of information it will need to gather. This information could include history, statistics, perceptions and opinions of stakeholders, and the alternatives available. The third component is individual prayer and reflection. Regardless of how it may seem, groups don't actually think. Individuals do. The process must provide the opportunity for members to pray and ruminate, focusing especially on context, experience, and reflection for the matter at hand. This is a good time to identify the values in play, the impact of our own experiences and feelings, and to become more aware of assumptions and biases. Having brought these to our awareness, the individuals can then contribute in a more meaningful way to the next component. And the fourth component is group discussion. In discernment, group discussion isn't a free-for-all. The group needs to follow ground rules, such as the four proposed in the second tutorial. Listening deeply, trusting others' intentions, sharing our own experience and insights, and having the freedom to let go of our own assumptions. The person facilitating the discussion needs to sense how much conversation is needed and how to structure it so that the members can express their views without fear of criticism, real or implied. There are several methods for doing this and many ways to apply them. The important point is that thought be given to how the group deliberates so that it can have maximum openness to the wisdom of its members and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The fifth component is the process for finalizing the decision. In some cases, the group may agree that it will discern until it can reach a consensus. In other cases, it will be clear that it will be put to a vote and not everyone will agree. Even when it comes to a vote, the process should be such that each member of the group feels it has been fair, open, and sufficient to surface all the important issues. All members of the group should be willing to support the decision, even if it isn't the one they would choose, because they trust that the Holy Spirit was able to guide the group as a whole. The sixth and final component is implementation. Now, strictly speaking, implementation is not part of discernment, but decision-making groups would be well advised to think about how their decisions will be implemented in the first place, envisioning implementation will shed light on the decision itself. Ignatius advises us to imagine looking back on the decision to become more aware of its consequences. Secondly, whether the decision is a good one or not will ultimately depend on how it is implemented. Those responsible for implementation will want to have a clear idea of how the decision makers intended it to be carried out. This is important even if they're the same people. Much more could be said about each of these components of group discernment, and they're treated in greater detail in my book, Discernment for Boards. Even without a deeper understanding of the methods and tools of group discernment, just by giving advanced thought to these six components, triage, background information, individual reflection, group discussion, 
decision-making, and implementation, groups will put themselves in a better position to make a sound discernment. The final tutorial in this series will focus on the four core tools that groups should use in their work even if they're not able to use everything else. Thank you for your interest in decision-making that serves the common good and seeks God's deepest desires for us and the people we serve.